Last time in episode 357, you addressed actor Laverne Cox, who was born a boy. He has now chosen to take on a female identity. Cox appears on the cover of the June 9 issue of Time magazine. And in the last podcast, you talked about the principles of Romans 1 and nature. But we need to make this even more personal. Um, Pastor John, what would you say to a young man or a woman who is considering a sex change operation? And for a variety of reasons, the transgender option appeals to them. Now you're sitting across the table from them. What do you say? Right. Um, yeah, it is absolutely right that I get to that question because last time I just tried to do foundational stuff. And I believe that those foundational things are absolutely essential in, in coming to terms with wh- who we are in our anatomy, in our chromosomes, and, and then in our identity. So let's, let's suppose the person says, okay, Piper, I, re- I, I listened. And I've always felt that way. I, I don't feel good about this. I believe it's wrong for me to try to get a sex change operation or whatever. Uh, what am I supposed to, to do what, with these unbelievably strong desires that I have? What about me and the fact that I, I feel like a woman even though I have a, a male body or I feel like a man even though I have a female body? What am I supposed to do? And bef- before I give my, my counsel, um, I, I really need to t- insert here a, um, a reality that I'm not talking about. Namely, there are rare births of babies with both sets of genitals. There, there is a real ambiguity in that case. Not an ambiguity of preference, but an ambiguity of nature. And I'm not talking about that tragic situation. That's simply heartbreaking for parents. Um, it's like any other heartbreaking birth defect or disability. And in that case, here's, here's what I would say if I were the parent, or what I would do if I were the parent. I, I would make the heart-wrenching effort to discern genetically and chromosomally the clearest biological foundation for the sexual identity that I could. And then I would raise the child that way using whatever surgery or hormonal helps were available. I'm not talking about that situation in, in, this, in this episode. That's, that's a real painful, natural, anatomical ambiguity. I'm talking about people whose anatomical chromosomal nature is clear uh, as male and female. So here's, wh- here's what I would say by way of counsel for what they might do. One, I think I've got seven things jotted down here. Uh, Number one, resolve once and for all that you will follow the Word of God wherever it leads until the end of your life or until Jesus comes. Don't leave it open-ended. Most of us stumble into sin because we leave things open-ended. We don't make any firm, clear commitments and resolutions. So set your face like flint to follow the Word of God. That's why I began where I did in the last episode. Number two, realize that these desires you have, this recurring sense of feeling like a gender different from what you are biologically, these desires, this feeling is part of the universal human experience of disordered desire as a result of the fall of man into sin. And every one of us is born with disordered desires that need to be uh, subdued. The ver- th- I was thinking about this. The variety of disorders in our desires is virtually infinite. That is, it's beyond medical or psychological ability to define. No one is without disordered desires. And when I say that, I don't want to make light of certain sexual Um, disorders that are really profound, really deep, relate close to very identity. I don't want to make light of them like they compare to some little thing that I, I deal with. But I do want to say that they are not wholly different from what all of us deal with. In other words, we all need a firm grasp of the depth and pervasiveness of sin and its uh, physical and biological impact for humans, it started with Adam and Eve. It was passed down from generation to generation. It runs through the physical members, the Bible says, and is ultimately under, uh, not under our control 
That's how deep sin is. The mind of the flesh cannot please God without being conquered by sovereign grace. We all have innate sinful desires. And most of them are related one way or other to our bodies. So we can't excuse ourselves because we have these strong psychological, physical desires. For example, 90% of the violent crimes in America are committed by one gender, men. Why? Well, partly because they have 10 times as much testosterone as women. Does that excuse us? No, it doesn't excuse us. It is statistically and physically demonstrable why 90% of all violent crimes in America are performed by men. And we're not excused by that strong uh, psychophysical reality that's in us pushing us towards these kinds of things. Third, uh, trust the blood-bought promises of God to give you the emotional and personal and material and relational help you need to live in freedom. Freedom from fulfilling uh, disordered desires. For example, let's just take the love of money. And I'm referring to deep, dysfunctional, craving love of money. Here's what the Bible says about how to manage it. Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your life free, free from the love of money and be content So it's telling us, get rid of one emotion and have another emotion. Amazing, the Bible talks this way. So get rid of love for money, be content with what you have, for, here's the ground, he has said, God said something, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear what can man do to me. In other words, God's presence and God's promise makes a powerful emotional difference in resisting wrong desires and finding contentment in really painful and difficult situations. And that's the way it is for all of us, trusting the promises of God to sever the power of disordered desires and to give contentment in in seasons of, of failed dreams. That's normal Christian experience, and some have to fight some things more than others. Some people have to fight some things more than others. And here's number four. Lean heavily on the Holy Spirit and by his power say no to the disordered desires. If you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live. So very specifically if you feel like putting on the clothes of a different sex that desire starts to rise. If, if the desire starts to rise to imitate the mannerisms or assume the postures or to fantasize as the other sex, Paul says, put that to death by the Spirit, that he's calling upon the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name to help you and then embracing the promise as a superior pleasure and then choosing long-term joy in holiness over short-term pleasure in sin. All of us have to do that. Number five, there is a positive counterpart to putting bad desires to death. Namely, present your members, your physical bodies in all their parts to righteousness. Don't just put things to death. Present your bodies to righteousness, it says in chapter 6 of Romans verse 13. In other words, there is both the negative putting to death in Romans 8.13 and there's the positive giving your members to righteousness in Romans 6.13. And it's crucial, therefore, to be acting out who we are in Christ. Two more briefly. Number six, as a young person, Talk to your parents about what you're struggling with if there's any temptations in regard to this transgender thing. And as a parent, draw out your child what he or she is is feeling. Seek wisdom from Christians who have gone through similar things and walked uprightly and, and get the best medical counsel you can from a doctor who shares your biblical convictions about God's design for men and women. And the last thing I would say, number seven, Life is hard. We are all broken. Look to the day when this light and momentary affliction of 80 or 90 years will be over and then everlasting joy and perfect wholeness. 
Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. And for more on transgender, see yesterday's podcast episode 357. See also John Piper's recent article titled, Genitalia Are Not Destiny, But Are They Design? You can find the post at desiringgod.org forward slash blog. And speaking of eternal joy and perfect wholeness, you've probably heard of Shark Week. But what about Heaven Week? Next week, we devote to all the questions you've ever wanted to ask about heaven, but we're afraid to ask. Questions like, will there be sports in heaven? Will there be travel in heaven and space travel in heaven? At what age will my resurrection body appear in heaven? Will I be old or will I be young? And of course, will there be sex in heaven? To help us out, we welcome our first guest of the podcast, author and speaker and friend of ours, Randy Alcorn. Heaven Week starts on Monday on the Ask Pastor John podcast. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Have a great weekend.